Hi there. Today what we're going to talk about is a solar still. Now what a solar still is, is a way to get some water uh, using the sun's rays. Now one of the things that we'll need for this is to dig a hole. Now I brought a shovel with me, so that's what I'm going to use to dig this hole. While I'm doing this, why don't you watch this short little clip uh, showing you what to do if you don't actually have a shovel with you. What happens when you're out in the woods and you need to dig a hole? Me? I never really uh, feel that a shovel is worth the weight to haul out into the woods with me, so I never have one with me. So what could I do? I could use my hands. Well, that's great if you're at the beach building sand castles, but out in the forest, you're not going to get much dug up with just your hands. How about your knife? Well, not if you ever want to cut anything with it again. Jamming your knife down in the ground is going to be a real quick way to doll that thing up. Another thing you could do, maybe find a rock out there. You know, I can get a little hole started and, uh, you know, maybe it's good for scraping. Uh, the problem is it's real hard to get a grip on this and to get some real pressure behind it. So, <clears throat> how about a digging stick? All you need is a stick, um, I'd say about this length, just enough where you can get two hands on it so you can really get some pull onto it. And then what you want to do is on the one side that's going to be, you know, hitting down into the dirt, I'd flatten it off a little bit. <clears throat> you know, just take your knife put a kind of a flat edge on there don't go any uh, don't cut any more than halfway through it or else you're just gonna <clears throat> get a thinner piece there so we're gonna cut this off and then what we can do you don't want to bring it down to like a real sharp point but you could give it a little bit of a point there especially if you have any tough dirt that you have to dig down into and now I can get two hands on this I can really jam it into there. I can really get some dirt up. You know, uh, you might need to, you know, you might be digging your solar still, or you might be digging a ca uh, coyote well, or you might be digging a cat hole for a latrine. No matter what it is, I still don't think a shovel is worth the wait to haul out with you into the woods, unless you're car camping, and it's great, throw it in the back of that. But if you're out there hiking, a digging stick is what you need when you need to dig a hole. Now I guess I did forget to mention, actually the most important part of a solar still is the sun. If the sun's not out and shining bright, this isn't really going to work. So this is basically for a nice sunny day. Uh, it would be best if you did this, you know, either the night before or you did it early in the morning before the sun came out. Because it is a time consuming process, uh, not just to dig the hole, but also to get the water, uh, to get the moisture and capture it. So if you're going to probably have to do this and let it sit for most of the day to get uh, the most water out of it you can. Now, I dug a hole here. Uh, it's not very big. It's not very deep. But that's kind of going to depend on the size of the piece of plastic that you have to cover this hole with. And that's the next thing that we need is a piece of clear plastic to put over top of this. And that's what's going to, um, you know, kind of be like a greenhouse effect. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some vegetation in the bottom of this um, or some leaves, whatever you have around. It can be grasses, weeds. Uh, I'd just stay away from things like poison ivy, poison sumac, that kind of stuff. You know, just some normal grasses, uh, some wildflowers, things like that. Uh, make sure that they're green and alive, not dead, because you want to be able to capture the moisture out of them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a few of those around here, and I'm going to put into the bottom of this hole. And now keep in mind, I've said in my other videos, if you are out uh, and you need to cut down some grasses and some weeds and things, uh, make sure you cut them off and don't pull them up by the roots. If you pull them up by the roots, they won't grow back, but if you cut them off, then most things will grow back. So I'll be right back. So here we are. I've gotten some green shrubs. Uh, what I like to do is, uh, you know, bruise them up a little bit because we want to be able to get that water out 
of them, but you don't need to destroy them. Just kind of rough it up a little bit. What we're going to do is line the, this hole that we dug with all of this vegetation. Now you'll see when we put the uh, plastic on here that we want to keep this grass down low. We don't want it to touch the plastic because what's going to happen is the water is going to evaporate out of the hole, but it's going to be trapped by a piece of plastic and then it's going to condensate on the inside of that plastic. And what we want is it to run down into one spot where we have a container that we can collect it in. So any grass or anything else that's touching the plastic, there's a chance that anything that condensates there is going to run down that and just run right back into the hole and not into our collection device. Uh, this will also work, uh, you know, if you were near the ocean and you had seawater, you could dump the seawater in there. Or even if you had, you know, some water from a questionable source that you didn't even want to boil or you had no way to boil it, uh, we could dump it down in here and then let it evaporate out and then we would just be getting the water out of it. This is also the only safe way to drink your own urine. If you wanted to, you could go in the hole and whenever uh, it heats up, it's gonna evaporate the water out of your urine, but it's gonna leave all the toxins and the waste down in the hole and then it won't collect into your container. So let me grab my container and we'll be right here. So here we have a couple different containers. You know, here is a, uh, you know, a metal cup that I carry with me. Uh, I also even have this little collapsible cup that you could use, and I have a bowl. So it really depends on what you have with you or what you could find out there. I mean, you could use a tin can, uh, whatever, whatever you had that you could use. Now for this, what I found is something that's flatter and wider actually works a little better because the, uh, the taller your container, the deeper your hole has to be because you don't want your plastic to touch your container either. You want this to be down underneath and then you also have to have it sitting on top of the vegetation. So what I'm going to go with is this camping bowl that I have with me. I'm going to put it down into the hole. So what I'm doing is I'm just setting it down in to the, uh, into the hole on top of the vegetation. And next what I have is a small piece of plastic. What we need this to, we need this to be big enough to cover our hole. So you basically what you're going to dig the hole based on what size the plastic you have is. Now obviously the bigger the better because you're going to be able to collect more moisture in your container in the same amount of time. But once you get to a little too big, you're also going to have to dig your hole down deeper because your plastic is going to sag, especially when the water starts collecting on it. Um, that weight is going to pull it down, so you need to make sure that your hole is deep enough so that your plastic doesn't end up down in your container. And as you can see, my piece isn't big enough uh, to cover the whole hole. But what I'm going to do is I'm going, I ripped it in half and I'm going to use two pieces of it. As long as you have a good seal in there to get the water to drip down in there. So what you'll need is a, are a few rocks. We don't need to completely, uh, you know, weigh this down, but what we do is we need to keep it tight and we need to keep it uh, from going, from going anywhere. So. I'm going to make sure I have a good overlap uh, since I'm using two pieces instead of just one bigger piece. It would be better if you had one bigger piece, but you will be able to accomplish it even if you have to cut it up into some smaller sections. So now, I have a few rocks on here uh, to hold it down keep it from going anywhere with the wind blowing or anything else. What we need to do we also need a smaller rock. Um, it doesn't have to be very large. In fact you don't want it too heavy or it'll weigh down into the plastic here. But what I want to do is I want to keep this plastic centered over top of my container in there so when the water condensates on the inside of it it's going to run down to the middle and then it's going to drip down into my container. Now I'm going to take some of the dirt that I dug out of the hole. I'm just going to cover you know around the edges here. I want to 
keep this all sealed up. I don't want any of my water uh, escaping out of the sides of this. I want as much as I can to get to stay in here. Now another thing you could do, uh, you could kind of rough up on the underside of your plastic, you know, especially if you had a whole piece. If you just rough it up just a little bit in the center where it's going to drip down in, that'll let the water collect a little easier. It'll kind of slide down and it'll get to there and it'll collect into drops and drip down into your container. Now, this is definitely an all day thing. This isn't something you're going to just sit here and watch happen. So I'm going to go off, I'm going to do some things and we're going to come back and we'll check on this. I'll let it out here for a couple hours and we'll see how much water we've gotten out of it. Uh, in the meantime, go ahead and check out this, another little outtake video I have of a different way that you could collect some water. Good morning. No, I'm not trying to relive the 80s with my bandana wrapped legs, but what I am doing is a neat little trick that you can do when you're out on the trail if water scarce or if you don't have any kind of water supply. What I did was I took a couple bandanas that I had in my pack, I wrapped them around my legs, and I walked through the dew covered grass in the morning. Now it's important that you get out and do this before the sun really comes out because it's going to burn all that dew off. What you can do, and I have my container, and I have my dew soaked rag. Now it's not going to give you a whole lot of water, uh, but it will help. And if you, you know, after your rags get soaked, if you stop and you wring them out, then you can always wrap them back on, either keep walking or, you know, I could walk back and forth here if I wasn't hiking on the trail, but I just need to collect some water. So then all I did was, uh, you know, I folded these in diamond shape, tied them kind of loosely around my legs, just enough to keep them on there, but not enough to keep it from soaking up the water. And now, if you can see, I didn't get a lot, and it doesn't look very appetizing. You know, it's got um, some grass in there and some dirt. What I could do, though, is when I was finished, I could run it back through my bandana as a filter to get all that stuff out. Now, if you don't have any bandanas, uh, depending on the time of year, you could use even some articles of clothing that you're wearing, like your shirt. Um, or even your socks if you wanted. Uh, me personally, I think I would probably have to be a little thirsty before I'd want to drink uh, dirty sock water, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do. So there you go. It's just a neat little trick, a little way that maybe you can collect a little bit of water on the trail. And um, you know, if you don't have any water or it's limited supply. Okay, thanks. So here we are back at our still. Now, before we open this up, I want to tell you, I don't have too high hopes for this. Uh, for one thing, it's only been about two hours, and like I said, this is kind of an all-day thing. You know, you set it and forget it. That is what's nice about it. Once you uh, dig the hole and once you get it set up, you just go about your business and you just come back later and collect the water, uh, put your container back in it, and let it set, you know, for the next day. So if you um, are using this and you're kind of at a base camp or whatever, this is great to just get it set up and let it sit. Um, now a few things, like I said, it's only been about two hours, which isn't really a, a long time, uh, especially it's August here, almost September, so it's not like it's in the middle of summer. Uh, also, it has been pretty sunny out today, but it hasn't been super hot, and there have been a lot of clouds, so the sun's been going behind the clouds a lot. And like I said from the very beginning, you need the sun for this to work. Hopefully you can see, uh, I can see that the condensate is starting uh, to form on the plastic, you can see a spot here where it hasn't even gotten down into the center yet. So like I said, I don't really imagine there'll probably be any water that has collected in our actual container, but I do see that the moisture is starting to collect on the plastic. So it is working, it just needs a little more time. But I'm gonna open up here and we can have a look. Yep, just like I thought, dry as a bone, uh, but there is quite a bit of moisture on the inside of that. So I think a couple more hours, uh, 
or a sunnier day, we would have had quite a bit of water in here. Now this isn't, this bowl isn't gonna get full. I mean, this isn't a super, it's not like sticking it in a stream, but it will give you some water where you didn't have some before. Uh, and the thing about this water too is, uh, you don't need to purify it. It is fine to drink just as it is. So in closing, uh, this is how you uh, build a sewer still. One thing I'll let you say to you though, if you are going to uh, distill your own urine, make sure you go in the hole before you put your container in there.